No matter who you are, there is a dating website out there for you. From farmers only, to gluten-free singles, to ugly schmucks. And no, I'm not making that up, that is an actual dating site for ugly people. Today we're going to be talking about one of the internet's most controversial dating websites, Ashley Madison. Life is short. Life is short. Life is short. Life is short. Have an affair. Have an affair. Have an affair. As of 2024, they're the 8th largest dating website in the world. This is despite a little incident back in 2015 where hackers leaked the private information of Ashley Madison's entire user base. All 37 million of them. As you can probably imagine, chaos ensued. A lot of people lost their marriages, and some even lost their lives. This is the story of Ashley Madison. I'm looking for someone other than my wife. My name has been associated with an Ashley Madison account. Her husband, Josh, admitted to having an account on that website. I deeply regret my affiliation with the site. We're the second biggest dating service on the planet. This is not a kid's game. Hackers swiped personal information from nearly 39 million people who use the website Ashley Madison. And now the hackers claim that they've posted all of that personal information on the web. Real names, credit card details, photos, conversations, and secret sexual fantasy information. Many of the addresses released are tied to government, military, and work accounts. Over 70% of people have been unfaithful at some point in their lives, and that's just the ones who admit it. So it was only a matter of time before somebody took advantage of this fact. That somebody was Noel Biederman. He's the main character of our story. Before becoming the so-called king of adultery, Noel was just a simple lawyer from Canada. One day he was whacking off in a Tim Hortons bathroom when he suddenly came to the realization that there was an entire untapped market of adulterers that was being completely ignored. So in 2001, he founded Ashley Madison to fill that gaping hole in the dating market. That's at least according to him. In reality, Ashley Madison was started by a guy named Darren Morgenstern, who sold it to Noel's company, Avid Life Media, in 2007. The dude basically pulled an Elon Musk, but that doesn't really matter. What does matter is that once Biederman took over the company, he started making some interesting changes. Firstly, he implemented a business model that was ripped straight from the sleazy Toronto strip clubs that Noel frequented. Women get in free and men gotta pay. But this wasn't a typical subscription service like other dating sites. Instead, you had to buy credits. So let's say you open an account and you get a message from a Sheila. It's gonna cost you five credits to read that message, which comes out to about a buck fifty. And if you wanna send a message, that's another five credits. Everything on this website costed money, including leaving it. For many users, once that post not clarity hit and the shame and regret set in, you can imagine that they wanted to remove all evidence that they were ever on this website to begin with. Well, you had to pay for that too. Ashley Madison had a so-called full delete feature, and for the low, low price of just 20 American dollars, you could completely wipe all your data off their databases. When you delete your profile, we will actually make it like you were a ghost. We'll take back every message you ever sent, every you know photo you ever shared. We actually erase it from our own servers. We do that because we know it's digital lipstick. It's not the lipstick on the collar getting you busted anymore. This very cool and completely ethical feature netted Avid Life Media close to $2 million per year, which to be fair was only a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of money it would end up costing them. But we'll get to that in a minute. Noel Biederman's strategies turned out to be extremely successful. He grew the company from a couple million members to a global juggernaut with close to 40 million active users all over the world. They were so successful that they started branching out into other dating sites, like Established Men, which was basically a sugar daddy website, Cougar Life, and of course, my personal favorite, the Big and the Beautiful, a dating site, quote, for women with curves who don't like to play games. Not gonna lie, I may have visited that last one once or twice back in the day. By 2014, Avid Life Media was valued at $1 billion, and they were pulling in over 100 million revenue per year from Ashley Madison alone. 
Noel himself had acquired a personal net worth of $97 million. I mean, this guy really had it made. Not only was he richer than a mother sucker, but he also had a beautiful family complete with a wife and two children. Now even though Biederman went on countless talk shows trying to justify infidelity, he was surprisingly completely faithful to his wife. <coughs> it kind of gets you thinking. Obviously this whole business raises major ethical concerns. Surely our boy Noel would have some kind of guilt about the families that he played a part in destroying. Does it bother you at all that you're wrecking families in the process and hurting spouses and children? You can't convince anyone to have an affair. You just can't. I don't have that power of persuasion. I think people unfortunately stray long before we created Ashley Madison. And so there's a lot of shooting the messenger, but we're just, you know, fulfilling a void that exists in the marketplace. I think it's much easier to sleep soundly on top of a giant pile of money. Things were going so, so well. But in 2015, the gravy train would come to a screeching halt. We are the Impact Team. We have taken over all systems in your entire office and production domains. It was easy. For a company whose main promise is secrecy, it's like you didn't even try. Shutting down Ashley Madison will cost you, but non-compliance will cost you more. We will release all customer records, real names and addresses, conversations, secret sexual fantasies, and employee emails. Welcome to your worst fucking nightmare. To prove that they weren't bluffing and that they did indeed have this data, the Impact team released a mini dump with a few members' profiles. But it was about to get much, much worse. There was a lot of debate on how this situation should be handled. Should they take down the website? Should they stand their ground? But in the end of the day, our boy Noel Biederman does not negotiate with terrorists. This isn't to say that Noel didn't do anything. In the background, he offered a $500,000 bounty to any information that would lead them to the hackers. They also brought in forensic experts, security professionals, and even the FBI. But it wasn't enough. On August 18th, the Impact team sent out a message to Avid Life Media's executives. It was just two simple words. Time's up. Before they even had a chance to process this message, a 32 gig torrent containing all of their customers' data was leaked to the dark web. It was so over. Never in the history of time had anything been more over than it was at that very moment. This is why it's so important to protect your data. You don't have to be on a cheating website to have your personal information compromised. That's why you need a VPN, and I highly recommend Private Internet Access, who just so happens to be the sponsor of this video. If you're unaware, a VPN is basically an app that hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through encryption. So it basically makes it a lot harder for people to access your personal data. It's very simple and easy to use, and with just one account, you can protect all of your devices. Oh, and let's not forget, it also lets you access content that isn't typically available in your country. For example, Forrest Gump is only available on UK Netflix for some reason. I just switched the VPN over to the UK and boom. Stupid is, stupid does. Right now, private internet access is doing a massive 83% discount to my audience only. Am I reading this right? 83%? <laughs> this must be some kind of mistake. You guys better hop on this before they come to their senses because... That's only $2.03 a month, plus you get an additional 4 months free. By far the best thing about private internet access is that they have proven in court that they do not log your data, unlike Ashley Madison. You guys remember that cool little full delete feature that I was talking about earlier? When you finish on a traditional dating site, you're really just taking your profile to circulation. On Ashley Madison, we'll go back and recall every message you ever sent, every photo you ever shared. We make it like you're a ghost, that you never even existed. All right. <laughs> We're okay. thinking it through. We're okay. thinking it through. We're okay. thinking it through. It was supposed to completely remove all of your information from Ashley Madison's databases for the low price of just $20. Well, it turns out that feature was more useless than male nipples. The only thing it did was add full delete next to your name in the database. So no one was safe. This was the biggest data breach in history up to that point. 37 million Ashley Madison users were outed. It was a complete shit show. Everyone from teachers to priests to government officials were caught white handed. I remember when this was going down, somebody set up a website where you could type someone's name in the search bar and it would tell you if they had an account. That's how I figured out my uncle Ruben was on the list. His life kind of spiraled out of control after we found out. It was pretty bad. But hey, you guys didn't come here to hear about my uncle. 
You came here to hear about the famous people who got caught, didn't you? <laughs> didn't you, you sick fucks? Well, let's get into it. One of the most high profile people to be exposed was a guy by the name of Robert H. Biden, who you might know better as Hunter Biden, the son of current not my president, Joe Biden. Now, here's the thing. Hunter Biden may be a drug addicted, philandering, corrupt scoundrel, but the one thing he would never do is have an Ashley Madison account. I am certain that the account in question is not mine. This account was clearly set up by someone else without my knowledge, and I first learned about the account from the media. He said from the bedroom of his dead brother's room after banging his widow. <sighs> Thank goodness the account wasn't his though, man. I almost thought he was a bad person or something. Gianni LaVale is famous for being the husband of Jersey Shore star Snooki. I hate you. You're so mean. You're so mean. What are you talking about? <laughs> love you. He was also caught trying to stick his salami where it don't belong. But hey, at the end of the day, what self-respecting Italian man doesn't have at least one guma on the side? Celia Walden is the wife of insufferable British newsman Pierce Morgan. His wife got caught in Ashley Madison, but she claimed it was for research purposes. Yeah, sure. My son said the same thing when I caught him browsing oiledupblackguys.com. We have a strained relationship. Sam Rader is half of the YouTube channel Sam and Nia, a Christian family vlogging channel. Yeah. Sam admitted that he signed up for a free account on Ashley Madison because he basically had a case of extreme horniness and wasn't thinking clearly and the temptation just got to him. As you may have seen, my name has been associated with an Ashley Madison account, a website made for spouses who want to have an affair. Um, I'm here to clarify some of this with you guys. I did make the account. You know, the Lord says, judge not lest ye be judged. So I'm not going to go too hard on old Sam here. You know, we all make mistakes. That being said, I'm not going to be as charitable to this next person. If you're not familiar with the Duggar family, they're the stars of the reality show, 19 Kids and Counting. They're basically this super conservative Baptist family with a bunch of kids. One of those kids, Josh, has been problematic, to say the least. And he's currently serving 20 years in prison for CP. Josh Duggar has described his family as being the, quote, epitome of conservative values. And those values were on full display when he was caught with not one, but two Ashley Madison accounts. Honestly, this is probably one of the least horrible things he's done. Now, what made this whole situation about 10 times more ridiculous is that it was also revealed that most of the women on Ashley Madison weren't even women. A whopping 86% of Ashley Madison's users were men. That's around 31 million men compared to about five and a half million women. But the impact team revealed that a large chunk of these so-called women were either Ashley Madison employees pretending to be users or just straight up femboys. Oh, hold on. I think that was a typo. I, I meant fembots. Fembots. Like AI. Imagine being this much of a schlemiel. You get exposed for trying to cheat on your wife and the whole time it turns out you've been talking to an AI chatbot. I can't imagine anything more brutal than that. After all of these controversies came to light, Noel decided to step down from his position as CEO, which was for the best because now he needed a lot of free time to deal with his own marital problems. You see, the Impact team didn't just release Ashley Madison's client list, they also leaked the private emails of Avid Life's employees, including Biederman himself. Turns out our boy Noel might have been going on a few side quests, if you know what I'm saying. For years, he'd been doing all these interviews talking about how he would never cheat on his wife, despite his line of work. You maintain that you have not had an affair like yeah you'd... noel biederman says he and his wife amanda are happily married and completely faithful i'm just a regular family guy i live in a, uh, a community in toronto that's pretty conservative and i live in a in a traditional uh situation with noel and and we Me, you don't you you have, have a monogamous relationship. relationship yes absolutely According to his private emails, Mr. Faithful over here was allegedly in a years-long affair with a Toronto escort, along with at least three other women. Allegedly! I can honestly say this is the least surprising development in this whole saga. It's like finding out your morbidly obese co-worker who claims she only eats salads is actually devouring an entire pizza the second she gets home. 
No one's buying it, Susan. We all see you eating donuts in your car on your lunch break. Now, guys, while it's funny to laugh at all these cheaters getting exposed, the hack had some very serious and very dark ramifications as well. John Gibson was a Baptist minister and seminary professor from New Orleans. Six days after the leak, he took his own life. He said in his suicide note that the leak was the reason why and he just could not handle the guilt and the shame. According to police, there were at least two other people who did the same. John's wife would go on to denounce the impact team saying that they viewed those people as a commodity and not as human beings. This was the first time people started questioning the morality of this whole hack because sure, at face value, it sounds awesome that these cheating assholes got what was coming to them. But at the same time, they're still human. And sometimes humans make horrible mistakes and maybe publishing those mistakes to the entire world isn't the best way of going about things. I don't know, something to think about, I guess. As for the impact team themselves, their identities were never revealed and they completely disappeared after the data leak. They didn't ask for any money or fame or anything. They did this out of straight up moral outrage.